first of all, tell me what would be my critical points of this function? What would be my critical points? Negative two. Negative, two. Negative, four. Negative one. Zero. Lovely. And not one. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds good. 0 0.8, 0 0.75, something like that. And it's not quite negative 1, but it's close enough. We'll say negative 1.1. 1 .1. All right, so those would be our critical numbers. No, we do not include endpoints because we do not have endpoints. This is not an interval. This is just, this is continuing, okay? It, it just has to do with the window um, of where this stops, okay? Uh, but clearly, it, it seems that this function would continue increasing on the left, and it would continue decreasing on the right. All right, so tell me, where is this function decreasing? What intervals? Okay, well, I just said that it continues decreasing, so this interval over here would actually be negative infinity to negative 2. Uh, where else would it be decreasing? From that one to 0, yep, so from negative 1.1 to 0, and then 0.8 to positive infinity. Yes. Weird behavior, the fact that it bounces, I mean, I'm trying to. Most likely. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, where is our function increasing? The other places, yes, from negative 2 to negative 1.1, and then from 0 to about 0.8, it is increasing. Okay, do you all remember doing this in pre-calculus a little bit? We talked about functions and increasing and decreasing intervals. Probably, we, we kind of skimmed over it. Paul wasn't here, so he probably doesn't remember it. Uh, but most people... What your struggle was is you wanted to use the y values. Instead of talking about the x values to identify the intervals, you wanted to use the y values because we were talking about the y's increasing and decreasing. So you wanted to use the y's. You wanted to use 0 and 2 and 0 and 1 instead of using the x values. That's not going to be a problem anymore because we're going to start talking about calculus. Uh, now, before we get into right formalizing any of this, I want to continue looking at this picture. On this interval, from negative infinity to negative 2, what would be the sign of the derivative? What would be the sign of the derivative? Negative. Why do you say that, Ellie? Because it has a negative slope. Okay? The, the tangent lines, the derivative, would have negative slopes. So on that interval, the one time that I don't, I, I thought about that. I was like, do I need to, do I need to clarify? I'll ask you your G so we Yeah. Sign with the G. Okay. Yes, I G in. Uh, would be negative. Just okay. F I G in. F I G. So it would also be negative from negative 1.1 to 0 and from 0.8 to 0, uh, to infinity. Okay? So anywhere you're decreasing, the derivative is going to be negative. Where it's increasing, it's positive, correct? Because the slopes of the tangent lines are positive and uh, negative. And where it changes, what's our derivative where it changes? What's the value of the derivative? Zero. Changes. Zero. Okay? Critical points, the derivative is zero, that's where it changes. Um, is this looking a little familiar to something that we have discussed in the past? Oh, that, I had a problem on this. Just like this. Okay. 
We have done some problems like this. Yes, when we did the acceleration and velocity problem, the particle motion that was problem. That was really? Yes. And honestly, in the past, it, it's after this lesson that I've introduced the particle motion, but I went ahead and introduced it before because I just wanted you to build these relationships. I wanted you to understand that if the slope of the tangent line is negative, then your particle, um, in this case, it's talking about decreasing, but your particle would be moving to the left, um, things like that. Connecting the function and its derivative before we actually connected them. Critical points. Critical points, what? It changes direction. It changes direction, yes. But, like, I would, you said that before, you said that you were across the x-axis. We're across the x-axis. Yeah. But that's the derivative equals zero. What does that say? No, that's the only time it's going to equal zero. Where the derivative crosses the x-axis. Where the derivative crosses the x-axis. We're looking at the original function right here. It just so happens that there are two places where the derivative is, equal, is zero, where the function is also zero. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do with this is, um, and this is what I was just talking about, remember in pre-calculus when we found our properties, we were talking about domain, range, intercepts, where the function is increasing, decreasing. You had to graph it with your calculator, you had to find all the maximums and minimums, and nobody could remember to use the x values for the intervals. You always wanted to use the y values. Calculus is going to solve that problem. Um, so what we're going to look at is we are going to determine increasing and decreasing intervals using the derivative. Okay, so I have slightly modified uh, the graph. When we looked at it the first time, it was the graph of a function, f of x. And we were talking about the intervals on which it was increasing and decreasing. Well, if you'll notice, this time I labeled it as the graph of f prime of x. I labeled it as the derivative of a function. And we're going to talk about f of x. We're going to talk about the original while we are looking at the derivative. So if we walk through our guidelines here, it says to locate the critical numbers where the derivative equals zero. So where does the derivative equal zero according to this function right here? Where's the derivative equal to zero? Negative 2, 0, and a 1. This is the derivative. This is the derivative. So it equals 0 at negative 2, 0, and at 1. Okay? Um, so my critical numbers are x equals negative 2, 0, and 1. So I said put those on a number line. You need to put them in order. And the way that I label my number lines is above the number line I write f prime of x, below the number line I write f of x. And we'll see what I do here in a second. All right, so. Uh, Step two says test a point in each interval. So I'm going to start over here on the left side. I need to pick a value less than negative three, less than negative two. I was thinking pick negative three. Okay. If I pick negative three, if this is the derivative, is the value at negative three positive or negative? Positive. Okay. The value of the derivative at negative three is positive. Therefore, what is my original function? Increase. Yes, I'm talking about y values. The value of the derivative. Yes, the value of the derivative is positive. So therefore, my original function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2. Okay? Between negative 2 and 0, what x value do we want to try? Really doesn't matter at negative one. At negative one, the value of the derivative is positive or negative? Positive. 
So guess what? My function is still increasing. It didn't change. So even though negative 2 was a critical point, for my original function, is that a maximum or a minimum? No, because my function is increasing, and then it's still increasing. It didn't hit a peak or a valve. Okay? All right, how about between 0 and 1? What should we check right here? My original function is still increasing. Okay, and then greater than one, I would pick two, two, the value of the derivative is negative. So finally our function is decreasing. So um, when this asks, we should say f of x is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 0, and from 0 to 1. And yes, you need to split it up, okay? Because even though it doesn't change, at negative 2 and at 0, it does have kind of a little slight pause, okay, um, where it's not really either increasing or decreasing. Okay? So yeah, you kind of need to break those up. And then it's decreasing from 1 to infinity. Now, I don't want you to get super confused. I don't think anybody uh, wrote it down the first time. Yes, I used the same graph, but in one instance I said that it was an original function, and in the other instance I said it was a derivative. Okay, Those two functions have nothing to do with each other. I just used the same graph for uh, two different situations. And they do that on the exam. I've seen questions before where they give you a graph and they say consider the graph above to be the derivative. Answer this question. And then they'll say consider the, the same graph above to be the second derivative. Answer this question. Okay, so you've got to be able to use the same graph in two different contexts. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So does that make sense what I did with the number one? Now we're going to look at it, we're going to look at an example where I'm not giving the graph, I'm not going to look at the graph, I'm just going to be given the function, and I'm going to go from there. Okay, so the question is, find the open arm intervals on which this function, x cubed minus 3 halves x squared, is increasing and decreasing. And yes, that is 3 halves x squared, the x squared is not in the denominator. So my guidelines tell me that I am supposed to take the derivative and then set it equal to zero to find my critical numbers. So the derivative would be 3x squared minus uh, 3x, bring down the exponent, 3 halves times 2 is 3. So when I set that equal to zero, it's a quadratic. I'm going to have to factor to solve. So I pull out a 3x. What am I left with? I'm left with x minus 1. So set those equal to 0 and solve for x. So I have two critical points. x equals 0, x equals 1. So test points, I'm going to pick the easiest numbers I possibly can. I'm going to pick negative 1, I'm going to pick 1 half, and I'm going to pick positive 2. When I plug negative 1 into the derivative, what is my result? I typically plug